Welcome to Monthly Mayhem, where we are the dads who score. How is everybody doing? Welcome back to another great month of Monthly Mayhem. Uh, I'm flying solo, as you can tell, this time around. Drew is on assignment in Redmond, Washington at Nintendo, I guarantee you. Um, what a month to be wrapping up. Link's Awakening on Switch is out, and it was great, and we had nine competitors this month blasting through this game every single one of them beat the game and i just cannot wait to go over this um just so much fun let's get right into it um i want to tell you about my experience with the game uh it's the most personal to me um as you know i didn't play this game until very late um my wife got her hands on the game on september 20th um she wanted to play through so bad she was just waiting every single day I was like, that's fine. I'm playing Dragon Quest XI. Um, you just go ahead and you just play through it. And I'll tell you, I, I, while she was playing through it, I, I wasn't like aching to play it. Um, I had played it a few years ago on Game Boy. I was really excited to play it on the Switch. I kept hearing all these people talk about the uh, frame rate issues. And I'm just like, you know, I'm really loving Dragon's Quest. This is, this is all good. But as the the month was coming to a close i just felt like i had to play link's awakening when was i going to play it and as it turns out i had a contract ending and i had a new job starting up i had a couple of days off um just to myself a thursday and a friday and i just decided what the heck just for fun i'm just going to marathon the game and so i started my marathon it was on a friday at 5 a.m. I woke up at 5 a.m. and I played that game until about 5.30 p.m. Um, I would say overall for the day, minus, you know, bathroom breaks and, and quick lunch and all that jazz, I played 11 and a half hours of uh, Link's Awakening. And I didn't complete it. I really wanted to complete it. Um, I'll tell you why I didn't, but I had a blast. I didn't get bored the entire time. I I was so afraid that I was going to like oversleep or just change my mind doing this. I let all of you guys know I was going to do this and I was going to stream it. And and I was afraid I was just going to wake up and go, ah, no, no. And then I was afraid like at six o'clock in the morning, I was going to regret like, oh, I got to play this for 12 hours. I really don't want to. I kind of want to go outside or do something. And I'll tell you, I did not get bored one time. Not one time. I was totally into it. And then by the time the afternoon came around and I was really pushing time and like it was really becoming clear that I really want to try to beat this game in the 12 hours. I mean, I I just was focused from the, the point lunch stop for the next five hours. I didn't get up for not even a bathroom break. Um, I just had a great time. And um, some of the highlights, uh, I'll tell you, my <laughs> the best highlight of this marathon came right in the beginning. Uh, after Link wakes up and then you are told to go, you know, get your sword on the beach. And I knew about the sword. I knew, I was like, oh yeah, I have to go to the beach. I played this game on Game Boy. Um, I knew the beach was located right below my house. I go down there and I'm like looking around. There's little spiny guys and uh, I'm getting attacked by just everything. And I could not figure out any way to get my sword. Um, I just couldn't find a path. I was just trying to do anything. I was trying to use, I, I don't know what was going on. And eventually I just went back to my, my home and was asking around again, make sure she's saying I need to go to the beach, right? Okay. And so I go back again. It took me 15 minutes to get my sword. This should have taken me 60 seconds and it took me 15 minutes. And here it is on a Friday morning. I'm going to play this game for 12 hours and it's taken me 15 minutes to get the sword. And I was down to a half a heart of health when I decided to just use my shield and push on the spiny guys. I would not, in a million years, I didn't think to do that. I don't know if it was because it was five in the morning or it was just a very weird mechanic. And I've played this game before and I just, anyway, 15 minutes, finally got my sword. I was not feeling good about my ability to beat this game if I couldn't even get past the first thing. Um, I almost had to look it up. It was crazy. <coughs> so, excuse me. So, got that. Got through the first dungeon. Um, had a blast. I was like, this game is awesome. 
Um, second dungeon where I ran into my my probably my biggest spot of issues. Um, I spent about an hour and 45 minutes between entering the second dungeon and leaving the second dungeon. Now, the problem that I had was I did not know how to defeat the shy guy. Um, I tried everything. I tried hitting him in the front. I tried hitting him in the back. I, I, don't, I tried everything. I tried pushing all the blocks. I tried everything. I could not figure it out. I began to think that you weren't supposed to like, kill the shy guy. Um, I left the dungeon, explored as far as I could, everywhere I could. Um, just had no luck whatsoever. Eventually, I had done enough to realize, hey, I need to go through and I got to figure out the shy guy. And that's when I figured out, you know, to do the the, the sword swing. Um, I was besides myself. I, I, I just couldn't believe if I had just figured that out in like a couple minutes, I could have been through the dungeon an hour before I did even more. Um, so that was really frustrating. I had gotten stuck in one other part. I'm not quite sure where it was. I think there was a door. Um, I kept getting stuck and there was just like an open doorway in the wall in the corner and I just didn't see it. I just didn't see it. I went around. I was going through the dungeon over and over and over again, trying to figure out what to do. And I saw it on the map and yeah. So I'm going to chalk that up to, you know, waking up at five in the morning. Um, my goal was to get past that second dungeon before my, my wife and uh, kids were leaving for school and I wanted to say goodbye. And um, I just wanted to get past that second dungeon. And I did just, just before eight o'clock. So it took me three hours to get past the first two dungeons. I was really hoping to have done that faster. Um, and I really should have gotten it done in like half that time. Um, so now yeah, next time, right? Um, another little hookup I had in the game was um, early on in the game, you get a chomp chomp. And um, chomp chomp's super helpful. Like you, he finds you seashells and he like attacks enemies. He really like makes the early part of the game a little, like just a lot easier. Um, especially when you're in the swamp and he's just, chewing up all the, the the sea life out there when you're trying to get into dungeon two and um yeah there's a part in the game i think it's like the fourth dungeon maybe where you have to go into the castle and uh the guy who you have to talk to to get to the castle tells you you got to leave the chomp chomp outside so i go outside his house and i'm just like trying to put the chomp chomp down um something that i wanted to do at some point anyway because he was getting a little annoying the way he was running around he's useful but don't get me wrong. Sorry, Chomp Chomp. But, you know, I just wanted to, like, be on my own for a little bit. And I just could not figure out how to get rid of the Chomp Chomp. I had gone back to my town, I think, a time or two. Eventually, yeah, I think I just, like, unlocked a dialogue sequence or did something. And um, I think I might have gone back to the town previously to try to put the Chomp Chomp away. And then I talked to the guy. And then I guess maybe then you're supposed to go back. Um, eventually, I figured that out. Um, that took me a little longer than I wanted to as well. It was getting a little frustrating, but um, uh, yeah, putting the chomp chomp away. I'd also want to know if there's any way to get the chomp chomp back or they force you to put the chomp chomp back to so that the seashells later in the game are more of a mystery. I'm not um, I'm not against that because there is an item that helps you find the, the seashells, so it makes it a little easier than not having any help at all. Um, so I don't know. Uh, dungeon seven was easily my least favorite dungeon. So this is the one where there's all of these like triggers and all of the, the levels going up and down and it's really easy to get stuck. You're trying to get into rooms with the levels in certain directions. There's a lot of falling. There's a big cannonball that you have to knock down four pillars. And like each one of those pillars just felt like it took me forever to figure out how to get them. Um, I definitely, I think I, I think I spent like, like a couple hours in that dungeon. If, if, if at least um i i started doing playing that dungeon the night of my marathon so i had finished the marathon at about dungeon six i had finished six dungeons i knew where the last two dungeons were but i could not get there um and i started doing the dungeon seven um and then i uh that night and then i finished that on saturday morning and then immediately, like within like four minutes, got to Dungeon 8. Um, so yeah, the last couple um, parts that I had to figure out were how to get the key for the 8th dungeon. That involved the flying rooster. Um, I had to get help from my wife on that one. I talked to the phone guy, the little tip guy. And he said, uh, hey, uh, check in with the flying rooster of your, of your village. I like talked to everybody. I went everywhere. It did not occur to me 
that the the flying rooster statue. I don't know why I must have walked by that thing so many times. And it didn't even occur to me. That's a rooster. Like, this is probably what I need to do. And I didn't think to push it. Um, I really wish I had. Um, so I don't know. What can you do? Um, I also was not able to find the last flute song. Um, I believe that's the one where you have to talk to the frog and bring um, when you bring the rooster to life. So I had some trouble there as well. Um, other than that, I mean, like the thing that I'll remember the most about Link's Awakening is just never being bored. And like even now, like when I finish a Zelda game, I'll often like forget a lot of bits about the game. Um, there's not much story sometimes to a Zelda game where the story is very contrite and it's like, oh, there's a princess and there's some weird mystery going on and blah, 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 blah. Something about just the, 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 the characters and how personal the characters are and the story. And like, I still remember the story. It's still engaging to me. And just the way the map is not gigantic, um, the way parts of it unlock, um, man, I, this is a game I want to play again and again and again. I can definitely see coming back and playing through this game, seeing if I can finish it a little bit faster each time. Um, I definitely am very curious to see how fast I can finish it in a second playthrough, um, given the hours that I wasted on just a few different things in the game. Um, but I really loved it. I love that the map was not that big. It's easy to warp around. Um, such a good time. I'd really like to play this game again on Game Boy um, a second time. Um, that was just one of the best mayhem games. I'm really glad we did it. Um, when Drew and I discussed it, you know, we recognized this wasn't a game like one more jump where scoring would be so critical, um, that you knew that there was going to be one winner and, uh, it was going to be the difference of even maybe a few points to like decide the winner. This was a game where like, wow, you know, you can beat it in 15 hours and you can 100% it in maybe like five to 10 more hours. And, uh, you know, we could have multiple people with perfect scores. How are we going to figure this out? But we decided, you know what? Everybody wants to play Link's Awakening. So let's just make this the competition. So that was like our off month. That was our fun month. Um, and I hope everybody had a ton of fun. Um, it's going to get harder now. Um, but that was that was the break. Um, you got to play Link's Awakening and enter a contest. Speaking of contests, we are going to have our winners um, announced. Before I do that, though, I want to talk about some of the feedback that you guys are giving me. So I have asked you guys, hey, what did you think of the game? Um, let's see. We have Cat Janitor here. Uh, Cat Janitor said, I have tons of nostalgia for Link's Awakening. And it was interesting to see how much they pr preserve from the original uh, it's shockingly faithful. The music and clever sound design was downright engrossing. And this is from a sound guy. I can't wait to play through it again in Hero Mode soon. Um, totally agree with you, Cat Janitor. Um, I want to play this game in, in Hero Mode. I'm going to wait and see if they fix some of those stuttering issues, those frame rate issues. Um, they didn't really bother me while I played. Um, by the time I played it, I had heard about it so often. I was just more curious than anything. Um, so it didn't really bother me, but... You can really tell it's a loading issue. So I have a feeling that Nintendo's going to get that issue fixed up. Um, you know, they're going to go through a ton of testing to make sure that they have that fixed up. Those loading issues and anything dealing with like paging memory in and out, those are not like quick fixes. You got to do a lot of testing. So um, I would like to play through this game in hero mode. I'm going to wait until 2020. And hopefully by then um, they'll have fixed those issues as well. So you can enjoy the game a little bit more. Um, if, they, if they don't fix them by the end of the year, I don't think they ever will. But. I think it's worth anybody who wants to do a second playthrough to just wait for those to be fixed so that you can enjoy the game perfectly. Um, Sir Nick says, It was my first time playing through it. It was fun, quirky, and just the right length. It reminded me how much I love 2D top-down Zeldas. In theory, I love a vast Breath of the Wild game, but life makes it hard. It does. Coupled with other releases to actually finish those. This was the perfect size, minus those frame rate hiccups, which I did find quite annoying. The game is great. Um... And then we have Santi Rod 64 loved it. Although the frame rate hiccups here and there kind of ruined the experience. The length is great and started all over from time to time. You know, I, I think we're seeing that common thread, which is, yeah, the frame rate hiccups, you know, kind of mess up the experience a little bit, but the game is still great. And look at this. People want to play these games multiple times. Um, that's great. And the, the other thing I love about a game like this 
this is a game where my wife will play, and she played it before me. And I know my kids will play this game. It's just, this is a game where some people said, is this worth $60, uh, you know, uh, a port? And it's like, this was not a port. Nintendo redid this game. There is no code from the original game in this one. This is completely redone. They just basically took the story and took the dungeon design, and they made a whole new game around it. Um, and is it worth $60? Uh, if we go with the Drew math, um, you're, you know, paying like $4 an hour. But you know what? If you have four other people playing it, um, you're getting, you know, less than a dollar an hour. So this is a great game. Plus, if, if you're playing it multiple times, I, I, I can't see how you wouldn't want to play it in hard mode um, or try to complete it or just all of that. Great game. Loved it. Totally thrilled that I got it done before the month ended. Um, and the other reason I marathoned it was because I was in the middle of Dragon's Quest and I didn't want to spend a week away from Dragon's Quest. So by only spending 30 hours away from Dragon's Quest, I was actually able to continue Dragon's Quest um, having beaten Link's Awakening. So it, it actually worked out. But now, let's see who was the best at the Link's Awakening. So we had nine competitors. Um, we're going to go through from ninth place to first place, and we're going to start out with our ninth place finisher, uh, Mr. Hernia himself, Brian S., with 196 points. That's a ton of points upon the board to enter this contest. And every one of our competitors did beat the game. So great job for all of you guys. This just comes down to completion. Um, so 196 points for Brian S. Um, good job. Eighth place. Sorry to say. Me. Zablanc. I took eighth place with 299 points. Scored really well. Um, only played it for the 15 hours or so. Once I finished the game, I didn't continue it again. Um, I'm going to try to complete it down the road in hero mode, but not my best showing. Um, but I was just really proud to finish the game off um, in the middle of all of that uh, in September. Seventh place, the Cat Janitor with 302 points. Great job, Cat Janitor. He's one of our newer competitors. Um, so great job there. Sixth place, Sean Abbott, another new competitor. 371 points on the board. Good job, Sean. Um, hope to see you guys again for next month. Uh, fifth place, Santi Rod, 64. 413 points. That's one of his better showings. Good job, Santi Rod, but not enough. Fourth place, Chris Waring. 424 points. Another good entry there. Good job, Chris. Third place, my co-host in absentia, Drew. 435 points. He thought he was going to do 100% completion of this game. He got that close. I think Amiibo prevented him from finishing off this game because we have two perfect scores this month. Ladies and gentlemen, perfect scores. Sir Nick and Stevie V, 439 points. They got all 50 seashells. They got all 32 quarter hearts. And they got all 193 dungeon pieces. Great job, guys. How do we decide a winner? Well, Drew and I knew there was a really good chance there was going to be multiple winners. We thought we might even have more than two. And so we said we're going to have to just do a random drawing to pick the winner. So we're going to do that random drawing. It's already been done. Uh, we were joined by a special guest. And let's go to her right now. All right. We're here. Um, I have with me, this is my lovely daughter, Melody. Say hi, Melody. Hi. And she doesn't know what she's doing here, but this is going to be the drawing to pick the winner of the contest. Melody, you know we had a Link's Awakening contest on Nintendo Dads, correct? Mm -hmm. There were two winners. They are Stevie V. And Sir Nick. Both of them had the high score. They did everything in the game. They're very good and powerful geeks. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two names. And I'm going to crumble them up into bits. Oh, we're going to crumble them up. We're going to crumble them up. And I'm going to put them in this little Yoshi cup. You can see it's empty. Name. Name. 
and I'm going to shake it up, and guess what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Uh, take a name out. You're going to take a name out, and when you take that name out, what will that mean? That person's the winner. The winner. All right, so I've shaken this up. Now I need you to close your eyes. Can you do that? Okay, now stick your hand out and pick out one piece of paper. Okay, and the winner is, announce it to the camera. Winner of the Lynx Awakening Monthly Mayhem for September is... Stevie V. Stevie V, you are a winner. What does he win? Do you know what he wins? Yeah. $15 eShop gift card. Give Marty or one of the other Nintendo dads a contact. Congratulations. You know, that was his first entry in Monthly Mayhem. Pretty good. Sir Nick? Yeah. Really sorry, Sir Nick. You did great. Uh, you got in the drawing. Um, you're just going to have to win it next time. Hmm. All right, Melody, say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Congratulations, Stevie V, your first monthly mayhem and your winner. Um, this bodes pretty scary. Uh, we're going to have a lot of expectations of you, Stevie V. Um, we expect to see you in the next mayhem. And I'm curious to see like, if you can give a lot of our multiple time champions a run for their money. Sir Nick, uh, sorry, bro. Uh, you 100% of the game, there was nothing you can do. Um, if you want to blame my daughter, you can. Um, Melody will cry to sleep, and that'll be on you. Um, but you did a great job, and you have uh, you, you should be proud of what you did. And because you had a perfect score and did not win the competition, you have the most lottery balls in our random drawing. And so we have eight competitors for the random drawing. The, the better you did, the more lottery balls that you have. Um, so, Sir Nick, you have 439 lottery balls. Um, it goes all the way down to Brian S. with 196 lottery balls. Um, we did the random drawing as well. And we had our special guest, Little Melody, come and handle it for us. So, Melody, take it away. Let's see who won the random drawing. You will remember Melody. Melody, again, does not know why she's here. So, Melody, who won the competition? Very good. So, as you know, in Monthly Mayhem, everybody who competed gets a bunch of lottery balls, and they get into the random drawing, and the winner of the random drawing gets how much money? $10. $10 eShop gift card. Now, Stevie V, you won the competition. You are now not eligible for this random drawing. So, we have the numbers on the board right here. Melody's looking at them now. See these numbers right here? You're going to hit the random number generator, and the number that gets picked is the person who's going to get $10 of eShop credit. So now I'm going to press this button nine times, and on the 10th time, that is when we're going to pick. Okay? So I'm going to pick it one time. 18. The second time, 745. The third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. Eighth time, ninth time. Melody, I want you to hit it one more time. The winner of the random drawing is 1404. That's going to be Santy Rod 64. You did it, buddy. Santy Rod is our winner. Let's give him a clap. Good job. Congratulations. $10 eShop card for you. May I suggest Return of the Oberdin? or any number of cheap games on the eShop. You can have five or six or seven or 20 games if you do it enough, or Return of the Oberdin. Just gonna suggest that. Um, all right, so congratulations to our two winners, Stevie V and Santy Rod 64 um, And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, Santy Rod, you finally did it. Sandy Rod has been competing in every single... He has competed in every Mayhem. He has completed in every Drew tournament. And he was in the Wargroove League. This is the first time he has won. I'm so proud. $10 gift card for you, Sandy Rod. 
$15 gift card for you, Stevie V. Give uh, Marty a contact and he'll get you those those codes. Um, go buy something fun. I will recommend Return of the Obra Dinn. I cannot wait to play this game. I have waited years for this game. Game Maker's Toolkit has raved about it for so long. I'm going to give it a plug. Return of the Obra Dinn. Give it a look. Uh, and maybe that's the game you grab. Or who knows? You can buy games for 10 cents now in these shops. So with a $10 gift card, you can get 100 games. Go buy 100 really crappy games. Um, but no, I, I hope you guys both did great. Uh, congratulations. And that's going to wrap up Mayhem for this month. We'll be announcing our next game soon. Keep an eye out. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for Link's Awakening. I hope you all had a tremendously fun time playing. And uh, I hope you just keep competing. Let's try to get more people competing. And we're going to maybe shake things up next month. So be on the lookout for the next video. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Hope everyone enjoyed playing. And we will see you in the October Monthly Mayhem. Look for it in about a week. Have fun, everybody.